Hi. I'm making this a uh, recording for sort of a safety measure. And so there is documentation from our side. Um, this is called uh, protecting my daughter. Um, I've been staying with my daughter and her boyfriend for the past few months. And they've been together for about two years and I have seen her almost disappear during that time. She's 20. So I've been staying with them and I've seen some of their ups and downs. I do not meddle in their business. They each have come to me and vented. And as a mother, um, I was there. I'm very good at giving uh, non-biased advice or if they wanted it and listening. And so I did and I did it for him and he thanked me. He said no one's ever been that way with him. No one's ever listened and understood and, and said the things that I did to him. And he meant it. He told me, he, uh, he, told, he said that he knew he had a problem. And as a kind of like a, as an emotional healer, I um, tried, I've tried to help him. Um, but they continued to go on roller coaster rides where he'd have outbursts and he did it to me uh, about a month or so ago out of nowhere he got in my face called me all kinds of names as soon as I walked in the door definitely unwarranted I, but I could see that it wasn't about me um, about a couple of weeks later he came to me and apologized and said that you know he said you didn't deserve that um, he said some things happened that day and it just had him in a rage and that, you know, I accepted his apology. I told him I understand, you know, um, and they, they've continued to, um, get back together and break up and get back together with arguing and, and all that. All the while, like she, my daughter, who I was very close to. We were very close in relationship. All the while, um, we experienced a sort of um, disconnect in our relationship. And um, she also experienced a disconnect with her friends who loved her, love her, and, and uh, support her. It was kind of like an alienation. All right. <clears throat> and I was seeing this happening, and I saw her... Uh, kind of lose her motivation to do anything actually um it takes a lot for her to get up and to take a shower but she's been working um at her job and all that which I think has been healthy for her yesterday I just got out of the shower and I felt got like intuitively to really center myself as if for like some sort of preparation right <laughs> and uh, he came in I heard him come in I was in my room and I uh, heard him come in and her dog which is her baby I guess had, had peed on his on her boyfriend's bed and they've had problems with him before I mean he's just they he hasn't um, been, like, he just has, he has a lot of energy, he's a dog, but he got in his room and peed, and so he uh, started, he went to my daughter in uh, her bedroom and started yelling at her and asking her to clean it up, and so she's been working on her willpower and standing up for herself and not doing exactly what he wants, and taking her power back. And so she said she would. 
I will clean it up. And so he continued, he continued to insult her, calling her names and, and um, that kind of thing. So she finally got up and was cleaning it up and he was over her. I could hear him like over her, like yelling at her the whole time. So he was inside of his um, bedroom facing the door and she was um, facing him. So he didn't see me. I walked out of my room and I went into her room and I paced around it several times just to gather myself because he was getting closer and closer to her, violently yelling at her, uh, threatening to take, to, uh, take her dog to the pound. He's pulled a gun on him before in front of her because he chewed something up. That's her baby, remember? He's actually certified as an emotional support dog because you know he knows where that 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 hits or where it hurts. So she said, "You're not," you know. She started crying and she's she interrupted him and said, "You're not gonna do that to me." And then he's still yelling and he said, "Fuck around and find out." At that point, I got right in front of her, between them, and I had her. I had my arm out over her, and with my other arm, I had a, a, thrown a lamp past him. Honestly, it was just to, to make him back the fuck up, and he said, "That's a salt bitch," and he grabbed me. He grabbed me, threw me on the floor, he broke the TV, and he beat my head into the floor several times while yelling that he's going to kill me. He punched my head and my face several times over and over. And I think I blacked out for a second. And I was trying to get away and get free. I had his hair by my hand. He had my hair and I was trying to pull him away and I turned my face and his wrist was right there. And so I bit it as hard as I could. And at that point I could see my daughter had jumped on top of him to pull him off of me. And um, I, I eventually got free and I, I could not feel anything at this point. I didn't even know what, it was just like so a blur. So I got free, ran to the neighbor's house a couple of doors down. They let me in, the lady started cleaning me up. She said I had blood everywhere. And the man called the police and I said, please go get my daughter, please go get my daughter. And he walked outside as he was on the phone and she was in the street and she said there's he said there's a girl in the street it's not her and I said yes so she came in the police came there was like six of them paramedics and stuff they asked if I wanted to they, they suggested I go in an ambulance but I didn't want to leave her I still was in like protective protective mode as a mother and so they interviewed us they interviewed him the police said that he blamed us and showed him the bite mark on his wrist. <laughs> and so we waited for a while. And then the police came back over there and said that they uh, took him to jail. And that they would let us know if he gets out on bond so that we were safe. And so we came and stayed with a friend of mine in her RV for the night. My youngest daughter's 12. She's with her dad. He knows the situation. She's, she's been with him for a couple of weeks because she told me, admitted to me that she didn't trust her sister's boyfriend. And I respected that. And, uh, you know, I let her dad know too. And so we worked together on that. 
Number one, do not underestimate your children's intuition. Number two, this could have been her. And num uh, number three, if she hadn't been there, uh, jumped on top of him, he would have killed me. He tried to kill me. And uh, she, she knew that he would have. And I've seen his rage and those outbursts get worse and worse. Because there is something deep, deep in him that needs healing, that he needs to face, that he needs to accept and forgive or something, right? Instead, those are reactions from wounds that are deep, that don't want to be seen, that you don't want to, to deal with. Because maybe you don't know how. It's not something that's widely taught in this world. It's not common knowledge. It's, it's something that's like woo-woo. But the fact is, if we don't face our inner selves and try to heal those things and try to overcome things that are deep within that we don't want to face, then we end up reacting from those wounds and anger and rage and hurting people around us and hurt yourself. And my daughter loves. She loves hard. And she believed that he would do that. But there comes a point where you have to Realize that you've lost a lot of yourself trying to do that. But slowly, in the last day, 24 hours, uh, less than 24 hours, I've seen her slowly come to. She's starting to realize so many things, it's like she's waking up from a dream. And I know this happens all over the place, but if you're in that kind of situation, you can get out. You are not dependent on anyone. You can get your power back and your will back. And as soon as you start doing that, don't listen to anything that, that they say to make you feel like you can't. Anything. No kind of guilt trips. Don't listen to it. Because they're reacting from their own pain. That has nothing to do with you. There's nothing wrong with you. She's, she's realizing things that, that she forgot and ways of th thinking that crept in that, that were developed over the last couple of years. Things she believed about herself, ways that she did things that were somehow shaped to be wrong. She's remembering her will. She's remembering herself again, slowly. And it started, you know, it started getting worse with him whenever he realized that she was starting to see through things, to see through the gaslighting. He called it that, actually, because she called him out on it a while back. She just told me this. She called him out on it a while back. He was trying, he was changing her memory, um, her memory to a different story, which is kind of crazy making and making her think that she was crazy and then forgetting. But she called him out on it. That takes a lot of mental strength. And so then, then thereafter, when he would gaslight her and she would call him out, he would admit and laugh about it. Like, ha, oh, I just gaslighted you so hard because it was funny to him that he did play her like that. But she still felt trapped. Even though I was there. And I'm so glad I've been there. And I'm so glad I was there yesterday. But he's still in jail to, to my knowledge. And we are trying to find a place to live. And um, I wanted to make this video because I don't have any idea what kind of retaliation is going to uh, ensue. But I did. we did say a really, really long like prayer and positive affirmations and things for him because I do have like love for him as if you know as if he's a, um I just have love for kids and for people who are hurting because they need it but they also need to accept that and receive that love from others and to know that they are worth that love really 
you know, I've read a lot in a lot of places and heard a lot of people say that those people that are that do those things and, and react in those ways and, and are in, um, I'm not going to say the glam, like buzzworthy word, but I feel like a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Um, but those people, I've read that they, you know, the opinion is that they think highly of themselves and they, they only think of themselves and they, you know, they, everyone's beneath them. That's not true. That's not true. There is inside of them, they loathe themselves. They do not like themselves inside. No. They don't. So it leads to them projecting all of those things they don't like about themselves onto others, including actions that they've um, had, such as him cheating on her and then blaming her for it. And she believed him a, a few times. I don't know how, but it works like that. It's manipulation. But it comes from a deep place of not accepting yourself as you are. They need love the most. That doesn't mean giving it freely until you have nothing left. But the love that's given to them, they have to receive it. Kind of like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it kind of thing. But they can make that choice to let love in. Love is healing. Love is not controlling. Love is, is, is kind. It's patient. Love heals. Love heals. This kind of shit, the, 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 the relationship that they've been in, that's, that's not love. That's using someone as a pawn they, to give you some sort of um, relief from your own pain because you're not because they're not facing it. Love doesn't alienate want you to be alienated from people who love you. That's just because they don't want they don't want you to see the. Um, They don't want anyone that knows you to see how you're fading away. But we saw it. We saw it. And she's been in contact with her, um, a couple of her close friends again, with me again. Because even in the same house, it's like she wasn't allowed to talk to me. But this is what a, a mother, there's nothing like a mother's love. And my two kids, I don't feel just love for them. I feel love for all kids. And, 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 and if you, if anyone listening is in uh, any situation like that, there is someone who loves you and will help you somewhere because you can't give until you, you cannot keep giving until you don't have anything anymore. Some people never get out of these types of things. And I think yesterday something had to happen like that in order for it to stop. I'm just really glad it wasn't her. I'm fine. I didn't go to the hospital. Because I, I think I got a concussion, but, um, like, nothing was fractured or anything, so I'm fine. I just feel really beaten up, uh, so to speak. But, um, yeah, so here's this update and, uh, just, like, our story. So that way, um, like, it's on video and, uh, that's our side. And I, I, you know, I wish there wasn't sides. Mm. That's just, these are facts. And I'm not in any way talking bad about him. Because like I said, I do have love for the kid. Love connects. If they only let it in. If they would only let it 
in.